Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. Today we'll be debunking some myths around pharmacy as a career option. My name is Andrew Rosabianca and I'm the Director of Admission for the School of Pharmacy at Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. I'm joined today by Dr. Con Dr. Stephanie Conway-Allen, Associate Professor of Pharmacy Practice at Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. So let's get started. Dr. Conway-Allen, one myth is that pharmacists can't invent anything cool. Is this true? Thank you, Andrew. Um, and I love that this is the first question. So this is absolutely false. So one thing that was invented by pharmacists actually includes soft drinks. So Coca-Cola, Pepsi, ginger ale, uh, and Dr. Pepper uh, were actually all invented by pharmacists. Uh, some actually as a tasty treat and some to treat ailments such as headache and indigestion. I mean, just the name Pepsi actually comes from dyspepsia, which would be essentially upset stomach. So in pharmacy school, in addition to learning about chemical processes and reactions, you learn about chemical compounds and ultimately medicine and what they do in the body. So it does only make sense that this knowledge would contribute greatly to the development of new medications, new formulations, therapeutics, and other life-saving products. That's great, thank you. So what about a myth that pharmacists just spend their days counting pills at a local pharmacy? This is very, very false. Uh, pharmacists are critical members of the healthcare team in every different healthcare setting. Uh, we work with all other healthcare professionals to make sure uh, that the safest and most appropriate medications are used and that the best possible patient outcomes are achieved. We check drug interactions, dosing considerations, allergy concerns. We counsel patients on how to use their medications correctly and safely. We advise them on non-prescription or over-the-counter products, as well as prescription products. We administer countless vaccinations. We develop medication protocols within hospital settings. We're responsible for research and development in the pharmacy industry. Community pharmacists are on the front lines of patient care, yes, and that's why folks often think about that counting pills, but in reality, we do so much more than merely count pills. Wow. Okay, here's another one for you. We often hear that pharmacists are limited in opportunities for employment. Is this true? This is absolutely false and true. As I just outlined, pharmacists work within all healthcare teams in all healthcare settings. In hospitals, we work in the pharmacy itself, sure, but we're also on the patient floors. We're in the emergency department. We're in the ICU. We work in outpatient health clinics. We work in long-term care settings and nursing home settings. We work in home infusion. We work in mail order pharmacy. We work behind the scenes in managed care or insurance, regulatory affairs. We work with the FDA, with Medicare, with Medicaid. We travel, we consult, and we do specialize. Well, Dr. Conway Allen, that brings me to another myth, which pharmacists can't specialize in specific areas. Is there truth to this? So there is no truth to that either. Pharmacists can specialize in many areas upon completion of their doctor of pharmacy degree. Some of these specialties would include oncology, cardiology, uh, pediatrics, geriatrics, infectious disease, psychiatry, ambulatory care. I mean, these really are just naming a few. This is done through postgraduate residency or fellowship training, both in uh, community or clinical settings, as well as industry or pharmaceutical companies. Uh, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences actually offers different programs within our curriculum to get our graduates started down the path of these professional uh, specializations. So these might include concentrations in research, such as experimental oncology research um, or geriatric pharmacy. We also offered graduate certificates in healthcare management, public health, med safety, there's a dual degree program with a master's in public health as well. In addition, our program also offers nationally recognized certificates and certifications in immunizations, uh, diabetes care, uh, as well as medication therapy management. So basically, uh, there are many areas and ways in which a pharmacist can specialize. Well, Dr. Conway, Alan, one thing that people think is that you need a bachelor's degree before deciding to go to pharmacy school. Is that true? Uh, great question, Andrew, and that is absolutely not true. 
Uh, you can have a bachelor's degree, but it is not a requirement. For entry into any one of our PharmD programs, either direct entry out of high school or transferring in from another college or university, there are prerequisite courses that you need to have taken, uh, but a bachelor's is not required. Some of these prerequisite courses would include um, math and science courses uh, in your biologies, your chemistries, physics, calculus, just to give you an idea. Uh, but you also have some humanities, behavioral, and social science courses as well. And all this information can be found on our MCPHS website. That's great. Thank you. Well, let's close with one other myth to see if it's true, and that's that pharmacists never interact with patients. All right, so this is a wonderful myth to debunk because it is absolutely false. Uh, pharmacists interact with patients in many different capacities across the different areas of healthcare. So to name a few, in the community setting, pharmacists work with patients every day to ensure the safe use of medications. Uh, we counsel patients on prescription as well as those non-prescription or over-the-counter products uh, that I had mentioned previously. In hospital settings, pharmacists speak with patients about their medications when they arrive for admission to the hospital, as well as when they're being discharged from the hospital. And this might include brand new medications that the patient has never taken before. And so the pharmacist counseling is imperative to their um, good quality outcomes and patient safety. Uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, pharmacists work with patients um, involved in clinical trials to discuss medication safety as well as protocol. And one of the biggest ones, especially lately, pharmacists are involved in um, administering vaccinations. Uh, less than 25 years ago, only nine states allowed pharmacists to immunize. Today, pharmacists administer vaccinations in all 50 states as well as Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. In fact, many MCPHS faculty, alumni, and students have been heavily involved in the administration of the COVID-19 vaccination efforts across the country. So pharmacists and patients interact very, very regularly, regardless of the setting, regardless of the um, healthcare situation, we certainly interact with patients. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Conway Allen. Um, I'm so glad we were able to debunk some of the myths today. As you can see, there's many of them out there and we just touched on a few. If you're interested in learning more or talking to us, again, my name is Andrew Zabianca. I'm the Director of Admission at the School of Pharmacy at Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to talk to you soon. Thank you.